Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Joe Jaguar, your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes. I hope one of them. I got something amazing for you guys that I haven't shown you guys in probably two and a half years. Let's get to it. It is the Takahashi 102 TSA. Let's get to it. Okay, so I got my best friend here, Joey, to talk about it, but he's kind of shy. Do you want to come back or do you want to just stay there and listen? Okay. He just wants to listen to what I'm saying, doesn't want to respond. Okay, guys, so you guys have seen me when I started the channel with this guy. And what happened is I got a friend and he wanted to get this telescope would bite off me back then uh, probably two years ago at least and because i had the 130 millimeter mead 6000 uh, 130 triplet and i did a test one time and they actually virtually were like undetectable i couldn't tell any difference except the 130 is 30 millimeters you know is a big difference from 102 so, but the image quality seemed to be very close. Now that says a lot about a four inch that can compete with a much, much larger telescope. It just means how good the quality is. So because it was extremely so close, I figure, okay, I can keep the Mead triplet and I'll sell to this guy. And uh, he's been very happy with it. He's also a very good twinker. Um, type of thing so he actually fixed the focuser to be buttery smooth comparing to uh, what it was um, now originally I had if you guys might remember I had the moonlight uh, large format two and a half inch focuser on that um, and I guess he didn't like it for whatever reason maybe he just likes the original a Takahashi finder which is fine oh I think he took that off he took the focuser apart he greased it he adjusted it put it back I would say as far as like tinkering and DIY and stuff like that there's some people that have a little bit more mechanics I think I'm okay you, you guys see me tinkering with making a Dobson base I change the bearings I change the balancing you know so there's some stuff I can do but when it comes to stuff like that I don't always want to play with it reason is because if you screw up that focuser to replace it is going to be extremely expensive or uh, you do an upgrade like the moonlight or feather touch but again the feather touch that I bought for this guy originally in 2019 cost me in Canadian money after the exchange, the shipping, the taxes, and the duties and all that, $713 for a focuser. So it's extremely expensive. So um, I also do like the dual speed. Uh, it also comes in handy. But anyway, um, so normally when it, this class of uh, telescope, uh, maybe also because I don't know, uh, maybe back then, how it's supposed to feel. Like maybe if I bought it brand new, I would know how smooth or tight it's supposed to be and because I didn't buy it brand new and you just get it you don't know if it's just because tack focusers and I have read it a lot that they're, they're not the best so there's quite a few tack owners that will upgrade uh, the focuser because they don't think they're up to par comparing to their optics right and I was kind of one of them but anyway uh, enough about that so I got this guy back and the reason or how I got it back is uh, when I got that 120 millimeter FS, which is, of course is a Takahashi, it was actually the uh, same guy who got me in touch with the guy selling it. So I purchased that. I showed it to, to you guys uh, several times. Now, throughout that last two years or so, 
I actually been itching to get this guy back, okay? But, you know, these are very far and few now. Uh, it's pretty hard to get these as because they're discontinued. Now, it's not because they're bad. I've said it before a few times. I think it's because Takahashi, um, they have a doublet 100DZ, uh, uh, and it's longer. I believe it's a F8. Um, I, my thinking is, this is just my opinion, is that this guy is actually very expensive to make as a triplet. And when they were looking at making a doublet, and of course making it longer, um, it's actually pretty expensive, that scope too. But I think it's easier to make, it's cheaper to make, and it's actually more profit for them. So they decided to go back with a doublet instead of the triplet. Takahashi still makes the 120 TSA. They left that. So obviously it's not this line that's lacking at all. I think it's that they just wanted to make a cheaper four inch doublet and discontinue. So finding this guy again would be extremely expensive. So at that time he was just moving. He put it in my ear, you know, if I wanted this guy back, I sell him the 128 FS for this one and plus cash indifference, right? So I used the 128 is probably for a good eight to nine months, which was good. Um, I also thought, you know, since he was the one that got me in touch with the guy who was selling the FS128, I do owe him a little bit in that respect, I guess. And I thought, you know, if anybody is to get the 128 and that was his dream telescope because it's a five inch, it is a little bit long. It's, I think about the same weight as this guy. It's a little bit longer and a little bit wider, of course, but weight wise, it's not much more than this. I think this is 16, 17 pounds at least. And I think that was 17, 18 pounds. So virtually identical, but you're getting five inches. You're getting a doublet, which uh, means it cools faster. Um, so for some people, that's a dream telescope. And so for my friend, that was a dream telescope. Uh, so him going a little bit up in aperture uh, made sense to him. So we, we did the deal. Now we do have an understanding that if I ever want to sell this guy, he gets first dibs on it. I also said, yes, and if you ever want to sell that guy, I would also retrade it and again, we'll do a cash difference as well. After, just before we did the swap and we talked about you know the differences and stuff, I did have, like in my mind, I was almost on the fence. Should I do it? Should I not do it? I wanted this guy back, but 128 millimeter or five inch double it, you know, best quality uh, Apple refractor, five inches is almost, I think the perfect thing. And I was almost like thinking, should I do it? Cause I was kind of on the fence. I didn't know if I wanted to do it, but although we already made a deal, I didn't want to backtrack on it. Um, what I dislike about my six inch TOA Takahashi, the 150 is the weight. It is so damn heavy at, I don't know, 37 pounds, I'm gonna say. Uh, it's, and it's not like lifting a 30 pound dumbbell or, or weight, it's totally different and trying to put it on the mount and try to, it's a bit heavy. So uh, that's where I thought, you know, this five inch at 17, 18 pounds is one, like two thirds the weight. It's only one inch smaller. Um, it's so much lighter and more portable that I almost, didn't know what to do. I almost was gonna tell him like, hey, I got second thoughts. So I think it's almost a perfect scope. So who knows, maybe in the future, he, if it gets a little heavy for him, uh, maybe he might want to downsize and maybe we'll swap again, I don't know. But anyway, I got this guy back and even though it's mid-December, um, Saturn's a little bit gone, but you can still see it and Jupiter's still at a good position. So I'm gonna try We've had lots of cloudy weeks here in Toronto, Canada, but let's see if I can try to still get Saturn and Jupiter and I'll try to, you know, 
videotape it, a live view, and then show you guys. If I get a chance in the future as well and I can borrow another four inch ED APO, um, I would like to do like I did back in 2019, this guy against the Skywatcher 100 ED. I, I wanna maybe borrow if I can another 100 millimeter, 102 millimeter um, type of ED APO and maybe do another comparison again, okay? But uh, right now I don't have another one in that category. I did have a, the FS102, but I sold it because I knew I was getting this one and there's no point having two four inch class uh, refractors. Now I was thinking if I had them at the same time, okay, maybe I would do a couple comparisons, but it didn't work out that way. So I no longer have the FS102. I only have this one, so I can't do that comparison, unfortunately, but that's how it goes. Um, anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody getting into the hobby, please share my channel with them. If you're on any of the forums and someone's asked about a video that I've done, if you can be so nice and share it, that would be nice of you. Also, I do have a members video, 99 cents and you can watch videos that I don't release to the public. Anyway guys, why not you? Why not me?